Okay, um, just continuing the previous segment of the lecture, I think the recording had a maximum length. Basically, we had this uh, two Dirac, uh, two Dirac's being passed for y, right? These two Dirac's here are being passed for y. And so we can write down our system for the frequency response of y as follows. And then we simply take an inverse Fourier transform of this to get that y of t, the output, is 2 cosine t plus 1.5 times cosine 3t over 2. All right. So now here's another example that you can go through, right? Let x of t equal e to the minus um, t, u of t. So this is your causal exponential. And then put this into a system with impulse response of essentially twice that right, two times e to the minus two t u of t. So if I were to do the exact same exercise, I'm gonna compute the output uh, y of t, but I'm first gonna compute its Fourier transform using the convolution theorem, and then I'm gonna take an inverse Fourier transform. So let's look at this. In order to remember always that we have uh, capital Y equals capital X times h. So in particular, I'm gonna to have to calculate x of j omega as being one over one plus j omega. And this calculation follows because it's just, you know, it's in the catalog. Uh, you have that a complex a causal exponential e to the minus a t times u of t is gonna have a Fourier transform of one over a plus j omega, right? And in this particular case, a is one for h of j omega, a is actually going to be 2. So you're going to effectively have 2 over 2 plus j omega. And so if I want to calculate y of j omega, all I need to do is multiply x and h. And if I multiply these two, well, hey, I'm going to get 2 over 1 plus j omega times 2 plus j omega. So this is the answer to capital Y. All right, so that was pretty simple. Now, how do we get lowercase y? So lowercase y is gonna be an inverse for a transform of this. And one of the ways that we're gonna to have to do this is we're gonna simplify it. So in what follows, I'm just gonna do some basic algebra. But I'm gonna do it fairly quickly. So feel free to uh, you know, come to my office hours if there's any questions about this. So y of j omega, remember, equals 2 divided by 1 plus j omega times 2 plus j omega. All right. Now, if I want to simplify this, note that just by principles of common denominator, that this is going to equal some constant a over 1 plus j omega plus some b over 2 plus j omega. All right, this is just um, one of the things that we know from how we uh, find the factors of uh, adding uh, you know, expressions with different denominators. Right? We need to convert them to a common denominator. So usually we're familiar with going from here to here but we're actually gonna do the opposite. And so if I do the opposite, we know that there's some fraction A divided by one plus J omega plus B over two plus J omega, but I don't know what A and B are. All right, so now uh, what I can do is I can, I'm just gonna rewrite this uh, on a bottom line here. I'm gonna rewrite it like this, A omega plus And so now what I can do is I can set this to be the left-hand side and this to be the right-hand side, right? Because they're, they're both equal. And then I'm going to multiply both by one, by the same amount, effectively. So I'm going to multiply both sides by one plus j omega, two plus j omega, just to get that kind of, uh, make it a little cleaner. One plus j omega. 2 plus j omega. 
All right. And if I do this, then if this is the left-hand side, the left-hand side is going to become 2. And the right-hand side is going to become A. And so now I need to solve for A and B. One of the ways that we can solve for this is to consider the following. Let's say that uh, this, you know, if I look at the left-hand side and the right-hand side, the left-hand side needs to equal the right-hand side for both cases where it's all real and all imaginary. So if it's all real, then two equals two A plus B. And in the case of imaginary, zero equals A omega plus B omega. So therefore, two A, equals 2 minus b, a equals minus b, so therefore 2a equals 2 plus a, and therefore a equals 2, b equals minus 2, and so if I plug that in, this equation here in red simply is equal to so I can take this expression here, and I can plug in 2 over 1 plus j omega minus 2 over 2 plus j omega. Right. So now that I have that, I can simply calculate the Fourier transform, because I know that the Fourier transform pair from duality of 2 over 1 plus j omega, I know that's simply a causal exponential. So I can convert this to y of t equals 2e to the minus t times u of t, right? That's just here, right? Because that's 1 over 1 plus j omega is the causal exponential, and we're multiplying it by 2. And the second one is, once again, 1 over in this particular case, a is equal to 2. So this is 2e to the minus 2t u of t. And this is your answer. So it took a little bit of uh, elementary algebra. And so if this doesn't make sense, uh, feel free to pause the video and rewind it. But effectively, the take home message here is that once we've calculated capital Y, we can simply calculate lowercase y by doing an inverse Fourier transform. All right. So remember that when we multiply two complex numbers, their magnitudes multiply and their phases add. These plots here, shown here, are just showing you for this particular example what the um, you know, uh, multiplications look like for both the complex exponentials, uh, the transfer functions, as well as the output. OK, so now we move on to a very exciting topic, which is known as filters. Uh, filters are constructs that are designed to extract or attenuate desired frequencies from a signal. So uh, a real world example is suppose that, I'm going to drop my pencil, give me a second. All right, suppose that uh, the you have an orchestra playing, and the microphones have recorded the high notes, the sopranos that are singing too loudly. Well, it turns out that we can rebalance this by selectively damping. If I put a low pass filter to, to block out those high frequencies, then this should, this should work out pretty well. Um, so for example, I could just use like an RC filter. Uh, but we'll see other examples of ideal low pass filters here. So let's look at uh, three idealized filters in particular. One is a low pass filter that suppresses all frequencies lower than a spe specified frequency. Uh, a high pass filter that suppresses all frequencies lower than a specified frequency. And a band pass filter that kind of looks at a specific frequency range. So here's how to look at visually. So remember, here's the origin, zero. So the low frequencies are close to the origin. Uh, in this particular case, the low frequencies are close to the origin. 
Um, let me just make sure that the screen is updating here. So yeah, the low frequencies are close to the origin, right? So here's the origin. And uh, if you look, the transfer function, if we look at, for example, the magnitude of the transfer function, uh, it's, it's passing everything here. It's, it's passing it with value one. So everything with value one is being multiplied as long as it's uh, the frequency omega of the sinusoid is less than omega c. Omega sub c can be seen as the cutoff frequency. So in particular, if I have cosine of omega naught t, and this is equal to, remember from our identities, e to the minus j omega naught t plus one half e to the j omega naught t. So here, if omega naught is kind of in this friendly zone, then it's going to get passed. Now, in, in contrast, if I have a high pass filter, a high pass filter will only accept frequencies above a cutoff frequency omega c. So this same frequency here is going to get killed. It's going to get killed because it's in that zero range. The band pass filter, by contrast, is in a very specified frequency range, right? It's centered around some frequency omega naught and will we'll only pass these frequencies through. So in general, uh, when you have kind of are writing this out in English, uh, you can just use low pass filter, uh, low dash pass, or, or whatever term you want, and people will generally know in the context of signal processing what you're talking about. So here's a check your understanding question on filters. So imagine that we pass the canonical delta function through a low pass filter. What is the output, right? So what we're going to do, the canonical delta function, right? I have delta of t in the time domain, and I pass that through. And this is this is the origin, right? And the delta function is right here. This is time. So I pass that through. What am I going to get for the output? In this particular case, you have a delta going into some system which I've told you is a low pass filter, LPF, what is the output, right? So feel free to uh, pause the video and take a stab at this question. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a look. Um, if I pass a delta function through a low pass filter, uh, what would I get as the output? So what that means is, uh, remember that the output y of j omega equals h of j omega times x of j omega. So let's first look at x of j omega. So x of j omega is gonna be the Fourier transform of a delta function which if we look at our catalog, that is simply just one, okay? And we're gonna be multiplying this by H of J omega. And H of J omega is the transfer function of the low pass filter. And it's a low pass filter, so it's idealized. So that is simply gonna be Here. The width of this is not important. There's some cutoff frequency here that we don't know about. But basically, what that means is if this is h of j omega, then you know if I if I do this multiplication of these, these two terms right here, if I do that multiplication, then y of j omega is going to also be the same thing as h of j omega, right? And then if I take a Fourier transform of y of j omega, then I'm actually going to get a sink. Excuse me. I'm actually going to get a sink function. All right? So this is going to be y of t. Therefore, the impulse response of a low pass filter or equivalently, the answer to this check your understanding question is that y of t 
is a sink. And this makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, I'm, if I put in a delta function into my system, it's got all frequencies, it's like a rainbow, right? It's got all the frequencies that are possibly represented in the world. Um, and, and that's shown here. So, but the low pass filter is only gonna pass the frequencies in the low pass region. And so you actually effectively get back the exact low pass filter because the rainbow has all the frequencies in the low pass filter. And so you have this low pass filter and then you take the Fourier transform and you get a sync because Fourier transform of boxcar is sync. Okay, so here's just another you know, slide that describes this. The ideal low pass filter is this, uh, this is also called a brick wall filter by the way, is colloquially. But the ideal low pass filter looks something like this, rec function. And this region here is called the pass band. So where this becomes interesting is if we actually were to write out the equations. Um, so let's write them out. So you have h of j omega equals the rect omega over two omega times the cutoff, right? So now remember that in general, rect of T over capital T Now we can apply duality and now we can set capital T equals two omega C for this particular example. And so now h of t is going to equal 2 omega c over 2 pi sink of t times 2 omega c divided by 2 pi. Which is going to equal omega c over 2 pi times the sink omega c over pi times t. And remember that y of t equals h of t involved with x of t. All right, so now this is giving you your um, ideal low pass filter in a frequency domain. It's just deriving mathematically that this is a sink in the time domain. All right, that's all we, we're doing here. And so this, Ideal low pass filters impulse response is the following, right? This is just a sync function, but just plotted on a axis. Please note that the sync function continues to infinity. We've just shown a small interval here. All right, so now let's uh, close the lecture by coming up, uh, discussing briefly a check your understanding question uh, from the homework assignment. So in particular, uh, in this particular example, uh, you're given an LTI system that, that has this differential equation form, right? And so the homework is asking you to find the frequency response capital H of the system. So how would you approach this? Well, um, as an attempt, feel free to attempt this question. You can pause the video and try to use, uh, look at the RC circuit that we did earlier in this lecture and see if you can apply some of those principles here. So feel free to pause the video and rejoin us on the flip side. Okay, welcome back. So in this particular case, since we have this differential equation that represents the system, all we need to do is simply just uh, to find capital H, remember that Y equals XH, and so H equals y over x. 
So all I need to do is find capital Y and capital X and find the ratio between them. So since we have the differential equation, we can start there and we can simply take the Fourier transform of that. So in this particular case, if I take the Fourier transform of both sides, on the right-hand side is easy. I'm just gonna get three times capital X of J omega, right? This is the right-hand side here. Um, if I take the Fourier transform of the left-hand side, what do I get? Um, well, we can just use our principles of derivatives and we actually end up getting J omega squared, right? Because second derivative, y of j omega plus, in this case, five times just j omega to the power of one, y of j omega plus six times y of j omega, right? And so now we just need to find the ratio of y over x. And so if we do that, it turns out that we can write h of j omega equals y of j omega over x, j omega equals three divided by, just doing some algebra here on this equation. So that equals three divided by j omega squared uh, plus five j omega plus six. And if you would like to simplify that, that gives you three divided by j omega plus two, j omega plus three, okay? And that completes this question. So, you know, hopefully uh, the homework is pretty easy this week. If you have any problems, feel free to come to the Wednesday office hours that I hold. Uh, thanks a lot for your attention.